My name is Samita Patel. I'm the Victim Witness Coordinator for the 14th Judicial District. We cover just Coffee County, mostly Tullahoma, Manchester, um, a little bit of Beach Grove, Hillsboro, that area. What a lot of general public will think is that when you hear the term grand jury, you automatically think there's a judge there, there's going to be jurors. They're not, they're not deciding guilt or innocence, they're just deciding if there's enough evidence against the defendant or the accused um, to go forward, that there's enough there, and then they say yes or true bill an indictment to go forward into circuit court. So there's no defendant there, there's no defense attorney, um, no rebuttal from the defense then. So oftentimes there's even hearsay that can be heard um, and they just hear the case. They can ask questions of whoever's presenting it. Um, our DA or ADA will help them along with it as to why we charged with what we did for the indictment. Um, and oftentimes they will either true bill it or no true bill it. If they feel that there's not enough evidence, they'll no true bill an indictment. 99% um, of our cases are true billed. Um, we have enough there, and that's why we go forward with it. A grand jury is composed of the grand jury foreman, um, and then our district attorney general, he usually goes in. Now it may be an ADA that does it as well, um, just whoever, but someone from the office. And then there'll be a panel of 13 jurors that serve um, at citizens from your district that will be chosen and then some alternates. Typically it's gonna be an officer or an investigator um, that brings a case, but we also have victims and citizens that, that will sign warrants and they'll bring cases. Um, and they will hear evidence, they'll hear a general idea. Some, they can ask for any evidence, so if we have photos or videos, they can also hear that. Um, it just depends on the jurors. There are two ways that a case can be brought to the grand jury. You can have a sealed or like a secret indictment, um, and that is like a direct presentment. Or you can go through the court process in general sessions and it can be bound over or waived to the grand jury. Um, once it gets um, selected, if it's bound over or waived to the grand jury, that just means that um, you know, it's been through that process, it may have had a preliminary hearing, and then um, we'll have to do an indictment and present it to the jurors. Every now and then that does happen. If they feel that there wasn't enough, like if for a first degree, if, they, if it's a premeditated, if they think, oh, you know, I don't think this was premeditated for whatever reasons they may have, they can say, well, we indict or we will true bill, say yes to this, but only if it's gonna be second degree murder. The red tape involved to be able to charge with what you want to charge with and not having the evidence to back it up. That's one of the hardest things for, for a lot of our victims. You know that they've, they've been done wrong, their family has been, whether it's a murder, an assault, a theft, anything, um, there are all kinds of victims. And you know, sometimes you have enough to, to charge with that, sometimes you don't. It's not something that you get to go to um, unless you're presenting the case. You know, you could, but you don't get to sit in and hear it. Um, I myself don't go in either. And so, it, and it's difficult. And a lot of times they think because there's going to be a judge or they're going to say, oh, they're guilty or not guilty. But that's not the case. It's just saying that there's enough evidence to move it through. And it's difficult because they've already, if it's been going through general sessions, they've already gone through so much to get there and then it's kind of like restarting the process. Like if it's a murder, uh, something for, you know, a sexual assault, a rape, um, murder, severe ag assaults, I'll probably call them that day or the next day and let them know. Um, if not, when, and then everyone across the board, all of our victims get letters from us advising them that it was true build um, and then what to expect in the, in the upcoming process. My 
I just really felt a calling for that. I, I was a victim at one point in time of just a robbery, and so um, a couple of times, and so I knew I didn't really have any contact. I didn't know what was going on. I was just kind of left on the back burner, never was involved in anything. And I didn't want anyone else to feel that way.